Hi then, hi there to all of you. Um, this is the next webinar in the entire series. Um, today we're going to be concentrating on childhood immunizations. Uh, um, I do apologize earlier, we had a bit of a computer glitch which uh, prevented us from putting this uh, webinar up on the um, on, on the um, website so it is a bit late but um, uh, as the old saying goes better late than never and I, again I do apologize for it today as I said what we're going to be going over is um, childhood immunizations we're going to be going over what they are um, when you have them and a little bit of detail about what the actual injections are and what, 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 and what they do um, as you'll see from this webinar, I'm going to be using mind maps. This is generally sort of my preferred method of 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 of, of going over this sort of stuff. But I'm also going to be using um, some PowerPoint, and I'm also going to be using um, a, 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 something like a PDF, which will give you an indication as to when you take these in, 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 in injections and immunizations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all go over why. Um, why is it that we, 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 we vaccinate children and immunize children? And generally there's three different reasons. Uh, as you can probably see from here, you've got um, it protects the child, which is the most obvious one. Um, the second thing is is that it, it protects the community as well. So if you've got a critical mass of people who, who are immunized, those who aren't immunized are also got a small amount of immunity as well. Um, it helps also to therefore prevent the transmission of the virus from one person to another as well. And that's something called herd immunity, which I've got written here. Um, the final one is something called disease eradication. So, for example, I'm sure you all know the well-known case of smallpox here, um, which was eradicated because of a, a, a very effective uh, immunization program throughout the whole world. And it looking as if possibly polio and measles may be going down that road as well of eradication too, um, according to the UN. So um, these are these are potentially other another two targets that, um, that, that 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 could go along the lines of um, smallpox in the near future. The near future, I mean, is in a few decades' time. Now I'm going to be going over the timetable with you in a little bit. Um, and th there is a very detailed timetable which I'll go over, you, which is here, which I'll go over a bit later. But let's go back to the mind map again. Now, generally, these sorts of injections are given, um, especially from childhood, anywhere between two months and eighteen years. Um, it's actually important that the child um, gets these quite quickly and when they're due as well. The reason is is that there is a small amount of immunity that the mother confers to the child when when the, when the child is born, but that wears off quite quickly, and hence the reason why immunizations are quite important. Um, there are a number of boosters that are applied to to make sure the immune system is uh, geared up towards any hostile attack from from a virus. Um, and it's actually particularly important in premature children as well, although you know um, premature children will receive special attention with regards to this. Now there is actually a very good website um, that I've uh, found, which um, let me just log, 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 let me just open up this. Bear with me. Now this is a really good one, especially if you've got children or if you've got a worried mum or dad coming into your pharmacy asking, well, you know, what, what do I need to do? When do I need to take it? Blah blah blah. Um, this one here, if it will open, there we are. Taking a bit of time, so my apologies. There we are. Okay, so this is actually called a vaccination planner. And what it will do is you effectively put in a few personal details of the child, like the uh, child's date, uh, but, you know, the name and, and the birth, date of birth. And what it does, it gives you a fully managed, here we are, uh, a fully managed um, uh, or program of immunizations that the child needs and the dates in which they need it for as well. So what you really need to do, I'm not going to go over it, but you just need to get them, the parents to sign up. And it's a free of charge service from the NHS. It's very, very useful, very, very good. And um, you know, you'll and, and the good thing about it, which is I love this, you know, you, you'll receive regular emails and text tailored to your baby's age as well. So it's it's a really good um, system to to encourage the the parents to um, make sure that their their child is immunised at the most appropriate time. Okay, so that's about the timetable. I'm going to be going over the actual timetable a little bit more in a bit uh, in, in a few minutes. Now the appointment checklist. Now there are a couple of things you need to know about the the appointment itself, just to make sure that the parent takes the red book along. 
and also um, the, 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 they need to make sure the red book is up to date and hence the reason why you need to record all the vaccines and all the immunizations that you have taken or the child has taken uh, because you might be important in years to come to know exactly what you've been immunized against and finally if you've got a worried parent coming on um, just a couple of pointers to um, what to, you might want to give them um, if, if they're going for their first or second immunizations the first thing is to use loose clothing the last thing you want is a, is a is a child that's sort of like constricted completely in, 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 in various clothes it's just going to be horrendous for the child and it's also going to be very horrendous for the parents as well um, you don't need to be a parent to, to understand that um, there's painkiller advice, obviously paracetamol after two months old you know for a few minutes post immunization pain and, um, and fever um, there's a possibility of allergic reactions you need to let the, the, the parent be aware of the fact that there's a small chance of allergic reactions. We'll go over some of the, the most common ones um, in, in a bit. But if they're aware of this, then at least that way they, they will know how best to react. And the second thing is, is, is a really quite important one, really. A lot of the time, parents are at work, um, and a lot of time it's the grandparents or, or relative who bring in the child for their vaccination. Now, um, you need parental um, authorization in order to conduct these uh, vaccination so a lot of the time it's a very good idea to inform the patient that a letter of consent may be um, required if it's somebody other than themselves who are taking the child in for their vaccinations so a very very quick uh, mind map with regards to um, child immunizations and let's quickly go over the timetable now I'm going to increase this a bit now as you can see um, just about hold on let's try that that's better Right, now um, my program that I use to do timelines doesn't um, allow me to take off the first 20. So in other words, ignore the first 20 in each one of these. It's not 2000, it's not 2001, 2002. It's actually 00, 01, 02. That's the age of the child all the way up to 18 years old, I think, 18, 19 years old. Now, as you can see, the poor child is jabbed quite a bit the first two to three or even four months of their lives and you can see the sheer number of vaccines from here so you've got um, DTAP, IPV, HIB, um, the 5 and 1 basically, the rotavirus which is a new one which will come over uh, meningitis C, pneumococcal, you've got, va you've got boosters occurring which is what these are um, these, sh these different shades are, uh, the same shades sorry I should say you've got another rotavirus booster there so that's the first dose, that's the second dose there so you've got a whole variety of different vaccines that, that literally uh, you're, you're pricking the, the, the child silly in the first few months. But remember, it's very important that you do that because the mother's immunity um, disappears quite quickly. Um, then the sort of next schedule sort of dose, you've got um, the MMR vaccine, the first and second dose between you know year one and year three roughly. Um, you've got various boosters coming on. There's actually a really important one here for girls only, which is the HPV vaccine, which is that one there. That's the human papillomavirus vaccine. Um, uh, it actually helps prevent things like cervical cancer. You've got things like another booster dose, I mean, meant you have to see here, and you've got the final one, probably around about the age of 18, which is a 3-in-1 um, teenage booster there. So you've got quite a lot of um, uh, vaccinations that the child is going through. and. Um, Unfortunately, there's not much really you can do about it. That, that, that's the way it is. But it's just to really highlight that, 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 that the first few months of the child's life is extremely important in terms of um, the schedule of vaccinations. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over um, some of the more important um, vaccinations that, that you're likely to come across. Now, obviously, you're not going to need to know every single one of these, but it's just to get, uh, give you a, a reasonably good idea um, as to uh, what, what what's what's going what's made of what's it for um, and 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 some of the things to watch out for. So the first one, um, let me just uh, pull this up. There we are. Is the five in one vaccine um, and uh, it's it's uh, it's generally for diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, polio, and Hib. Now I've highlighted a few of these. Um, if you look on the schedule. Which let me come on here. So first of all, you've got five and one. You've got a five and one booster. Um, then it goes down to four and one. All right, and then eventually, if you go along there, there it goes down to three and one. 
There's similar sorts of ingredients inside there, similar sorts of, oops, sorry, similar sorts of um, things that you would use. Um, and that's the reason why I've highlighted it. So diphtheria, tetanus, and polio are given in the 3 and 1. Then you've got diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, and polio, which are given in the 4 and 1, and the 5 and 1, which is the whole lot. Okay, so um, that's the reason why I've highlighted it that way. So it's, it's, it's a similar sort of vaccine, but you, you, you would te generally tend to reduce the components as you go along. Um, it's the first vaccine that's normally given, um, and, and the brand name to it is Pediasil. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's generally very safe and effective, and you do have some side effects. Um, I mean, in very, very rare cases, you have things like anaphylaxis. Uh, that's still like one in a hundred thousand. Um, you've got one, uh, so, you know, a very rare rate would be um, uh, inconsolable crying, and you've got sort of the, the, the more common, I wouldn't say common, it's actually quite rare still. You know, one in one thousand people with convulsions, popness, and you've got the less common ones, things like diarrhea, vomiting, and you've got the very common ones, fever, pain, swelling, etc. So that's generally the 5-in-1 vaccine, and as you can see from the schedule, it's, it's, it, there's, a, there's a number of boosters to it, and um, it tends to go down um, as, as, as you go along. I'm not sure whether or not what these ones here are called, actually. I don't know what the brand name for the 4-in-1 and 3-in-1 are, but, um, but, but uh, uh, the, the, the first vaccine is actually PDSL. Now the pneumococcal vaccine. Um, let's go back to our little schedule here. The pneumococcal vaccine, if you look here is somewhere, if I can find it, find it, find it, here we are. Okay, the first dose is given at around about two months. Um, note the PVC here. I'll come on to that in a minute. And then you've got the third dose, probably around about one year, and I think you've got a second dose as well. If I go up, here you go, you've got a second dose, probably about uh, two months, possibly about three, four months, you'll have another one, and then you've got another one at about a year as well. Let's go back to the thing. Now, uh, it protects against uh, pneumococcal infections, which is obvious because of the pneumococcal vaccine. So the sorts of infections that will protect you against things like pneumonia, septicemia, and meningitis. Um, and it's spread by prolonged contact with people who are infected. Um, now the, the, the nasty thing about this one is, is that the actual infection itself can remain dormant. In other words, you won't know um, simply by looking at a person that they've actually got it, um, that they can be appear quite healthy, they can, the infection be quite dormant, um, but it can be passed on to somebody else. And the incubation time is normally about two or three days. It's an, uh, there's two different types of infection that it can cause. Um, it's uh, sorry, of, of pneumococcal infection. There's a non-invasive type and there's the invasive type. The non-invasive includes um, infections outside of the organs, and it's generally less serious than obviously invasive ones are inside the organs, and it's extremely serious. These vaccines can be given to two particular groups. These are the under twos, which we've seen already, and because this is specifically on childhood vaccinations, I'm not going to go into the over 65s, but there is another version of the pneumococcal vaccine for over 65s. Um, and it's also very important for children and in adults with long-term conditions. Now, remember I mentioned PVC, I suppose PVC, PCV, you know what's on my mind at the moment, no, PCV. Um, this is the particular one which is used for uh, children, so it's the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, that's what it stands for, and the brand name for it is Prevenar 13. Um, now, the over 65s, I'm not going to go into this, have another different type of vaccine which is called the PPV. So bear in mind the two different versions. Um, okay. Oh, don't know why I did that. Okay. Anyway, um, now it's not for people who have got a vaccine allergy, who are generally unwell, or have an immune weakened, so weakened immune system. And as you would expect from most infections, so most injections, I would say you generally tend to find things like mild fever, redness, and possibly hardness or swelling at the injection site as well. Okay, so that's the first two done quite quickly. Um, now, I'm going to be going over rotavirus. Now, rotavirus is a relatively new. In actual fact, it came out in July 2013, in actual fact, this month, when this webinar is being recorded. And it's um, a generally two-course uh, vaccine. So you've got the first dose, which is around about two months, and you've got another one, um, which is around about the three to four-month mark, because I think it's the three-month mark. Um, it's recently come out, you know, it's, it's not something that, um, that that was done previously on a regular basis. 
So as he said, as I said earlier, it's from July 2013 onwards. Um, rotaviruses are a very common cause of diarrhea and sickness, uh, a condition known as gastroenteritis. Um, it's um, given as a liquid in the mouth, and the thing is, is that the rotavirus could, because of these two issues, the sickness and the diarrhea, is a possible cause of extreme dehydration. It's also highly infectious um, and transferred by touch. So one of the things that you need to bear in mind if you're handling a child is to make sure you wash your hands you know, after changing nappies and, you know, you, the, 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 and, and so forth. Um, because of the fact that um, children are, tend to be in quite close contact to each other in nurseries and infant schools, it's very common, this, this sort of infection in, in these sorts of environments. The Rotavirus vaccine itself helps to build up the immunity. It's 90% effective. The brand name is called Rotarix, and it's actually a very safe medicine. Um, the only sorts of side effects you tend to expect with these, um, the, the main ones anyway, is the development of a mild diarrhea, which is which is reasonable to expect, you know, considering the fact it's a rotavirus uh, vaccine that you're using. There are some um, serious side effects that you need to be aware of, and obviously you need to, if, if a, um, a patient comes to you and says that the child has got this, then it's an immediate referral to the GP stroke A&E. Is things like uh, um, gastroenteritis, not gastroenteritis, sorry, um, gastric hemorrhage and blood and stools. And if they've got that, you take them straight to to A and E. There's no hesitation there. But uh, that's that's the rotavirus in 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 a nutshell. All right. So the next one we're going to be going over. Um, as you can see, I'm going through this very very quickly. Um, uh, but 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 um, as I say, you've got you've got a lot of information here that you can that you can rewind and, and come back to if need be. Next one is meningitis C, and if you look in here, the meningitis C, if I can find it, bear with me, I'm just trying to remember where it is. Uh, you've got the meningitis, well, it's a hid meningitis C booster there. You've got another one somewhere, bear with me. There you go, you've got meningitis C there, which is around about four months, and you've got a booster, um, probably about a year old, and I think if you scroll along, there's another booster here as well, at around about 14 to 15 years old. So you've got three boosts, so three injections altogether in that sort of uh, condition. Now, um, it, um, as, as the name suggests, it protects against meningococcal group C bacteria, so meningitis septicemia in particular. It does not protect against other forms of meningitis, so this one is only against meningitis C. Remember, if we look earlier, I think we've got pneumococcal vaccine here. Hold on, bear with me. This also protects against meningitis for the pneumococcus um, condition. This particular one only protects you against um, uh, meningococcal group C bacteria. Um, uh, and it's actually the highest rate in its under fives, particularly under ones, and hence the reason why majority of the vaccines are given at around about this particular age. Okay, let's move on. MMR. This is the most controversial one, which is not really controversial because the evidence is quite clear. Um, but um, this is the one you're probably most likely to get questioned about as a community pharmacist in the community. is about the, um, the MMR vaccine, uh, the mumps, measles and rubella. Now, all these conditions, uh, just to give you a general background, are common and very highly infectious. There are potentially fatal consequences of these three conditions. Meningitis and cephalitis, for example, are two particular examples that these conditions can actually cause. It's particularly rare now in children to uh, develop these into serious conditions, but it has actually been rising recently. Um, there have been current breakouts recently. I think in, I think it was sometime in March 2013, or was it May 2013, somewhere around then anyway, where there were breakouts, I think in Wales, um, simply because of the fact that parents have not vaccinated their children against the MMR vaccine. Um, um, if a child is suspected of not being fully vaccinated, then ideally, you know, they really do need to um, arrange a GP to, with a GP for a catch-up um, if they're not fully vaccinated, especially if they're in an area whereby there is an outbreak. Now, I'm gonna. I've highlighted these in red. I've bolded them. I mean, I might, I might as well just highlight. I mean, I underline it as well and italicize it, even if I want to. These are two things that you really, really do need to understand. Um, a lot of the issues caused by MMR uh, was, was caused by defunct research that was conducted a while back. Um, autism and bowel disease has been completely discredited. It does not cause these two conditions. 
and also single vaccines are not recommended are un and are unavailable on the NHS they are they will not give you single vaccines of these ones if you're gonna get it you're gonna have to get the whole three um, the reason is is that it's much easier to forget to take the single vaccines in the future than it is just the one um, vaccine which is what the combination product here um, and as I said it's, not, it's unavailable in the NHS as well so please 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 bear these two in mind now, um, in terms of the side effects, you're likely to get a mild form of measles or rubella for a few days. You may get bruised like spots after the injection after a few weeks. If that's the case, you see the GP. It shouldn't be given for these conditions. I mean, hopefully, you know, you're not, you're not going to give it to anybody who's pregnant. I hope anyway um, that they have had an injection of immunoglobulin or blood product in the past three months. They've had a severe allergic reaction in the past, or that they've got a weakened immune system. Okay, so that essentially is my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, the only thing I haven't really put in is the human and papilloma vaccine. Um, this is particularly is for girls only. It's not for everybody. It's it's there to protect the, uh, the, the, the the child and the adult, in actual fact, from cervical cancer in the future. Um, I mean, you're, you're, you can quite easily look up uh, that on the internet as well. But all in all, you know, that, that, that is it. I will be posting these up on the internet, so you should be able to get... Oops, I think it would be 78. Let's try. You'll be able to get this, uh, this schedule as well um, that, that I've created for your own use um, of, on vaccinations. It will give you an idea, again, if you post this up in your pharmacy, if you get questions, then you'll know roughly what to do. And as I said earlier on, um, have a look at the... Um, if I can find it. It's this one, isn't it? That's it. Have a look at that website that I posted on earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll highlight the um, the web address if it will hurry up. Okay, it's um, again, it's a really, really good one. Um, you know, you can put in a, a fake child or whatever just for you to play about with. But it's www.nhs.uk forward slash tools forward slash pages NHS vaccination planner dot ASPX. Um, uh, hash uh, close so see how you get on with that um, that's it for me for this week or this month in natural fact the next webinars now will be after the summer it will be in um, September to give you a little bit of a break and um, I'll see you then and thank you for listening take care now bye bye